is Rory O'Toole. And my name is Matt Schultz. And this is How to Be. The podcast where we discuss ancient wisdom, modern hacks, paperback self-help books, and pithy platitudes. In the hopes of figuring out the best way to live this one precious and wild life. Do you strive to hold your head high? Do you aim to be a respectable member of society? If so, join us as we discuss Dignity. Look at you. Hi, Matt. Look at you, a little China doll, all you know, scrubbed and brushed. I have a hellish day ahead of me. So two hour so, commute, five hour event, two hours back. And and you how do you achieve this look? Oh, I put on makeup. Your hair, your hair looks so silky, silky smooth. Well, I take very good care of myself, as I told explained to the audience in my self-care episode, you know. The contrast between the rosy red of your cheeks and the pure porcelain white of your non-cheeks. Just striking. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I must say. So, what have you been up to lately? I went, I went to the Scientology Center. Tell me all about that, because it just seems so whimsical and young to do something like that. Maybe it actually has something to do with my job interviews. What do you mean by that? You know, I'm up finally applying for like rabbinical internships. This is my last chance to get out. Oh. <laughs> you know, may I need like a, a rum springer. See, may, could any other religion make me happy? What? How so was it? Tell me about the experience. Well, I've always walked past the Scientology Center in Yafo. Uh-huh. And I've always wanted to go in because I'm I'm a curious person. I'm the type of person who wants the Jehovah's Witnesses to knock on your door. Interesting. I want to have that conversation. There's always people in this one street in Tel Aviv handing out religious literature. I want to talk to them because I'm a religious man and I'm curious what they think about things, you know? Sure. Yeah. But I was scared that they would, like, steal my DNA and keep me in a registry or something. Oh, so what's the... Walk us through the process. Well, I was walking past and I figured, I have already given away my DNA and my data to so many different companies. Right. And governments. Yeah. It's honestly rude of me to not let the Church of Scientology have it at this point. <laughs> so I went in, there was a woman... At the front desk, she smiled a very wide smile. Hi. And yeah. then this guy came and he talked to me. And I was like, I was like, so what what's up? Like, are you Jewish? Like, do you still identify as Jewish, even though you're a Scientologist? Uh-huh. And he was like, Yes, I do. Oh. Um that's what and, they can tell you to get you to yeah. me, you know. Exactly. And then I was like, can I'm. I want that those metal things that you hold on to. Do you got that? Can we do that? <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah." So he brought me into this other room. He was like, "We'll do a little sample." And I held on to these two metal bells, and there was this weird looking piece of old technology. Mm. Um. And when I thought stressful thoughts, it went. The needle moved. He was like, so if I was your auditor, that would be something we would clear. Did you think any non-stressful thoughts? I think so. I think I, I wanted more time alone with the machine to really see what was making that needle move. But he kind of wouldn't let me have it. Okay. He's like, It could have it. been just whenever I thought it moved. So wait, do you think that this machine had some validity to it like it was measuring your pulse or something or was it complete junk the machine does something the machine sends an electrical current through your body and 
measures something. It's a real machine that does something, whether it's any sort of effective tool in achieving spiritual enlightenment or going clear, I cannot fathom that it is. Yeah. Like, are you telling me that when when John Travolta uses it, the needle just doesn't move? No, he told me that what you want is for it to be flowing back and forth. He He said, that's called a floating needle. That's good. That means you're clear. Oh, like in our uh, flow state episode, you want to be in a flow state when you're in a science when you're Scientology clear. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, am I to believe that John Travolta has a different result than anyone else, or maybe he's just learned how to like control it? You know, like it respond the machine responds to you, you respond to the machine. Eventually, you could kind of learn to control it, right? Or maybe they control it for him. Or maybe they control it for him. Yeah, what if I had walked in off the street and I had been completely clear? Yeah, has that ever happened? They would have been like, whoa. Recruiting religions are so interesting. It's like, is Islam a recruiting religion? Do you know much about Islam? I wouldn't call it a recruiting religion, but it's a proselytizing religion. Like, uh, most Christian religions are pretty... Well, a lot of Christian religions are pretty recruit-heavy. Yeah, th that's true. You go on mission trips. But I was like... As, and then they put me... They had me watch this stupid movie, and then I had to go, and I was like, all right, bye. Um, <laughs> See you never. No one took my name. Really? They didn't think you were serious. They could tell. I was serious. Like I was projecting seriousness. I was I was projecting vulnerability. Okay. <laughs> to being persuaded. I was <laughs> I was projecting cult susceptibility. I I was annoyed. Hmm, maybe we'll see if there's any follow up. It's like in Seinfeld where George hears that these these carpet cleaners give you a really good deal on cleaning your carpets because they try to convert you to a cult. Right. And then he's like offended that they don't try to convert him. Right, right. He's like, I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was projecting genuine curiosity because I was genuinely curious, not in converting, but you know. I don't know. I maybe they're not so good as as good as we think they are at getting people in the fold. Maybe that's like, not. maybe it's like, yeah, you have to come back on your own accord. We only want people who are serious. Anyways, Roar, why don't you tell the people and me what we're talking about today? We're we talking about dignity? Dignity. I guess one thing I want to talk about is like, should you have dignity? <laughs> like, what do, we, what is dignity? Is it, is it like the awareness? Like, it feels so, um aware of other people and the way they judge you and is that a way that's worth living your life i think we're actually talking about honor are we what's what are what's the difference i'll tell you what the difference is dignity is like toilet paper on your shoe mm -hmm. honor is like your daughter married someone from the wrong clan and now you need to throw her into a volcano no, I'm not talking about like not being pathetic, like not texting someone late at night and not picking your teeth when you are face to face with someone. <laughs> I'm talking about toilet paper on the shoe, not putting someone in a volcano. But like, not, more, oh, like okay. more like your actions, not not like things that have embarrassing things, like things that you do that like affect your self-esteem like getting sloppy drunk at a work event like there's no dignity in that you're right that's undignified the other thing you said what was the other thing you said calling someone yeah texting like a guy who's like been horrible to you or next boy. okay yes that's also dignity okay so and honor like honor cultures like having honor yeah, let's, that's like so far from our culture that we don't even need to talk about it. Yeah. How you define dignity? I mean, yeah, I, th I almost think dignity is, I'm thinking of the office 
when Andy arranges this big performance that he's going to do where he's going to come into the office as the janitor and look totally like decrepit and spill soup on himself and mop the rug. Uh And then he's going to like, surprise, I'm actually the CEO later in the day. And Aaron pulls him aside and she's like, some of these images of like him spilling soup all over himself and mopping the rug, sadly, are not going to be easy for people to forget. And I almost think that dignity is, it's about appearances in that way. Yeah, Um, 100%. And it's like, it's very much so about having, being a respectable person in the eyes of others. Yeah, and not being gross. Yes. Um, There's something, okay, there's also something very undignified, like, you know, we talk about preserving people's dignity. Like if somebody is naked, you cover them, you know, right. like having a, a breast tumble out of a shirt hurts your dignity somehow. <laughs> a nip slip is a, is a matter of dignity. Yeah. And, you know, I think we're in a culture that is moving away from like such formal parameters of dignity obviously we're freeing the nipple now for some reason so the goalposts definitely can move for dignity i mean it used to be at a time if you were a woman engaging in premarital sex you had no dignity no i think that's honor can it be both (laughs) maybe it's both but even in a world where you've freed the nipple what makes the nipple harm the dignity is the unintentionality of it. A hundred percent. Like this one time, Sam and I were walking back to our car after dinner and there was just a naked man laying next to our car. And he seemed so normal besides the fact that he was naked and laying next to our car. Like he did not seem um, like he was someone who lived on the fringe of society, let's say. Mm -hmm. And as we were had to like essentially walk over him to get into the car he kept apologizing like i'm so sorry i'm so sorry and i was like this is a man who is capable of dignity and has completely lost it in this moment for whatever reason yeah that's that's rough (laughs) so did you help him no should i have yeah it sounds like he needed help well, no, usually I'm the type of person who will, like, well, now it's become a, like, who do we call? I don't know. I'm usually the type of person who will always call for help on someone, but he seemed like he, he seemed okay. <laughs> he was going to be A-OK. Like, what, was he, what, what, what could I have done? Called the police? I don't think that would have made it better for him. No. Maybe I could Something... have been like, do you have a friend I can call for you? Yeah, there, there's yeah that I think that would have been the move. Hindsight. There's there's something common in this part of the world where sometimes people who are asking for money on the streets, um, especially if they come from a religious background, whether Jewish or Muslim, will wear a veil over their face at the time that they're asking, mm. perhaps to preserve a sense of dignity which I think it's revealing that that's not part of the culture in the West because it shows the the different weights that we culturally accord to dignity. Mm. Um, But I was watching this YouTube video the other day about this guy named Jason Nash. Have you ever heard of this person? No. He was part of like a content house. Oh. And... That all sur- revolved around this one guy named Dave Dobrik. Oh, was I know like a- that name. Okay, yeah. So he was Dave Dobrik's friend and would be in all these goofy videos with him. And he's older. He's like in his late 50s now. Oh. And he looks like he's in his mid-60s. Okay. And now what he does for money is he goes on TikTok Live for billions of hours at a time Mm -hmm. and asks for money Mm. hey send me a little gift cool first person to send 
me three emojis of a panda, which like are all money, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's Mm -hmm. all money that he gets. I'll, I'll shout you out. And he has a wife and children. And (laughs) the fact that his dignity and his dignity is bruised by it. You can tell he's, he's ashamed to a certain extent when he talks about it, but not enough to get a job, a real job. Not, but yeah, it's like not ashamed enough to get a real job. And like, why not get a job at Trader Joe's like that guy from the Cosby show? I don't know. It's that's weird because there's like, there's the dignity we say that the the working man has. And then there's the dignity that we really ascribe to the working man. Yeah. Yeah. We would think, oh, he's fallen so far. Whereas, yeah, or it's just like, here, I mean, the greats, the great, you know how I feel about people on the lowest, fo- lowest totem pole, the lowest rung of the economic spinning a sign, spinning a sign for a place. It's not that I think that's undignified. It's that I'm worried other people think it's undignified. And some people might look down on it. That really bothers me. It also bothers me that they're being paid. such. A it is pay. undignified. I think it's undignified. I don't say that with any blame. I just don't think that that's the proper use of a human being's splendor and dignity, inherent dignity, producing nothing of value, spinning a sun, do, performing the 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 job that's normally done by the the pole part of a pinwheel okay so not even the sparkly flag part of a pinwheel or the guy who goes like this in the air one of those guys i'm just yeah, the, wildly the flag w- waving man. wiggly arm flag man who's like filled with air at a car deal dealership I think that yeah, so but there are so many jobs that are undignified that are better paid and less public you know that produce nothing of value to the world, if that's what we're talking about when it comes to dignity jobs. Yeah, there are lots. Wait, what did you say? There are other jobs with just as bad dignity, but more money? That are more money or less public, you know? But I think yeah. that say the spinning sign is the worst because <laughs> it is, you're right, it doesn't produce much value. And Someone's paying for the spinning sign, though. So is it? Is it drawing people in? I don't know. I don't know. You only see it in LA. Jobs, dignity and jobs is like, that's the hardest thing to talk about, I think, because everyone who has a job has to debase themselves so much. Yeah. Yeah. Jobs are a bit of a debasement. Debasement. (laughs) You have to show up on time. You have to say no worries. (laughs) When yeah, it's all annoying. you have to. It's just so hard to have to spend so much of your time. Yeah, it would have been better when we were hunting and gathering. There's inherent dignity in both hunting and gathering. Yeah, there kind of is. But what if you're hunting and you fall on your face and you don't catch the deer and then everyone laughs at you? Yeah, that hurts your dignity. Why do we even have a concept of dignity? Because we have a concept of self esteem, I guess. Yeah, but what, well, well, there's, it's a preciousness. We're precious about ourselves. Yeah, it's ego. We like to hold ourselves in a certain esteem. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. I think it's important too. And I was at, you know, we were talking about a a group of friends and myself. We're talking about, what were we talking about? Uh, We're talking about, the need to have closure with exes basically and how I would never of course do that. I don't care to debase myself in a way to say, Hey, I know you dumped me, but let's get together so I can have closure. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. My friend was like, who cares what this person thinks? Like, why do you care? And that's a great point. Why do you care? Yeah. My point to that is because my self-esteem is really important to me and I don't want to wake up in the middle. What would haunt me more? is waking up in the middle of the night like, oh my God, I debased myself. Yeah, well, you know, these it's not 
it's not really about what that person thinks. It's about how you treat yourself. Right. Exactly. And how you teach other people to treat you. So what that other person thinks might be a temporary inducement for you to behave a certain way. So like, yeah, if uh, if a guy has been treating you like trash, really like being me and doing that neg thing where he makes little insults, you know, um, but you still have a crush on him and you d- desperately want his validation. And then he, his, I'm really drawing out a whole scenario. You literally see him hit on another girl and she rejects him. And then he drunkenly comes up to you and is like, invites you into a bathroom to hook up. <gasps> oh. Now, in the moment, it might seem like the the power dynamic is the the reason to reject him. Oh, I want to snatch the power back from him. Mm-hmm. And I want to look cool. But that's not ultimately what it's about. It's about living a different kind of life up here. I'm gesturing up high. Here. Overall here. having, overall. What, how, how would you describe that as not having... But it is a powerful position. You are putting yourself in a powerful position, but not just in the situation, like this overall power that you have over your own life. Yeah, and you respect yourself and you won't get into, you won't get into that scenario again mm-hmm. if you consistently treat yourself like that. You'll, you'll treat yourself like you have some value. Mm-hmm. And then other people will treat you that way too. So it's not really like, oh, who cares what what he thinks? It's like, if you don't care what anyone else thinks, then clearly you don't care what you think. And you don't care what is. Yeah, absolutely. It's also like I find the, the most judgmental people are the ones who say they care the least about what, how people view them. Lies. Interesting. Um, yeah, I think that I learned my lesson about dignity really hard, really young when I was in a whole relationship with someone treated me like really badly. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it really, I really was so undignified in that relationship and like just like constantly let someone treat me badly. And it scarred me so much that I walked out of it phobic of allowing that to happen again almost. Mm -hmm. yeah some people need to learn the lesson in a thousand different ways well also maybe they're not learning the lesson some people have no dignity they have no self-respect yeah it's just a point you know what that's just the point of view that's the way they see the world they don't see it through the lens that we do that we're articulating right now in this whole episode yeah okay you know what was um a fascinating debate I had with a friend, which was a discussion of these people who live a full-time life as like uh, puppies for a puppy master in like a fetish scenario. Okay. And they inject silicone into themselves in their nether regions to make it look cartoonishly big. And that's like so out of the realm of normalcy. Can you even put it in well, the framework of dignity? It's like they get literally they have such a strong sense of dignity that they get off on having on it being stripped away so extremely, right? Well, that's not even where we went with the discussion. So the discussion was it was a sad story. One of these puppies died from the illegal silicone injections. Mm. And I, I guess the legal silicone injections. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah, go to the, that's go to that's how to be silicone genital injector. Okay, don't get one on Groupon. Don't get one on Timu. <laughs> so, I said to this friend of mine, "I f- I feel bad for those young men's parents because that's what their kid is doing. How embarrassing!" Yeah, totally. And. He said, well, what's 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 the harm? It makes you happy. Who cares if it makes you happy? And what the we went back and forth about this for a long time. 
And basically what it really ended up coming down to was that I have a value that this person doesn't have. I'm not saying I have more values than him. I'm just saying that there's a, a categorical value on my side. May he has categories that don't exist for me. Right, exactly. But there was a category on my side that completely doesn't exist for him, where I thought that this was not a dignified manner for a human being to be. I yeah, I didn't think it matched the the splendor and potential of a human being. But he was just like, we're all here to catch a thrill, man, and to do it, you know. And and I also find that way that I feel that way about um, certain choices one can make about their body or their styling where like, I think like getting a, a funny tattoo, funny, weird tattoo of a zombie head on your neck. I don't care if that's what you're into. Mm-hmm. You were made in the image of God and you're not respect. You're not like, you're not like tuned into that fact. And like, you should be in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, for but me, not in my opinion, in my belief. For me, it's like I always want to be seen where like people are like, oh, she's a respectable person. Like that is a value I have. Like and dressing up like a puppy wouldn't fall in line with she's a respectable person. <laughs> but I think we're talking about things that are a little different. I'm I'm talking about beyond just it's not respectable. I'm talking about something theological. Oh, well, that we're put on this earth for something a little bigger than being puppies in somebody's playpen. Yeah, and there's think, dignity think, and gravitas in that. I don't think that uh, I think we you know we don't really live in a godful culture. So no. that is lost on a lot of people. That's as value specific to maybe you and other religious folk. Yeah, but could could is there. Is there no space for that in a in a God free framework well don't the idea, human it's also deeply humanist that the idea that we're put on this earth for a bigger purpose no but the idea that humans have a, a unique splendor and potential that we ought to live up to yeah i feel like that's very out of fashion that's not something that people really believe humans are you know disappointing i think to a lot of other humans yeah, we have very That's low, special. we're probably better than we've ever been and think less of ourselves than we ever have. We definitely think less of ourselves, better than we've ever been, arguably, but I don't know. That's a big old Venn diagram, pro and con list that my brain can't quite handle. Um, but yeah, I think for me, it has to do with like wanting to, the way I want to be seen and the way I want to be seen and the way I want to feel on the inside. I want to feel... Like I have dignity because that helps my self-esteem. You know, people are always saying, Rory, you're so confident. And I think it's because I don't have too many moments in my recent history where I feel like I've completely like compromised my dignity. But you know where I feel my dignity very much so compromised when I drink. It's like this weekend we're in Vegas for my friend's birthday and it was a raucous good time. Don't get me wrong. But I woke up the next day and I had like four drinks. So that's not even that much, right? I mean, that's a lot for me, but four drinks over like six hours. And I was like filled with regret, even though I didn't do anything that could be like, I didn't even say anything, let alone do anything that could be considered undignified or embarrassing. But just being intoxicated is inherently like not dignified. No? I wouldn't say you didn't do anything. You did. You think if you ask a Puritan colonial woman if you did something? <laughs> what I mean? Say no, she's innocent. No, I'm talking about her by our own cultural standards. You did sinful things. Oh, we went, went to, to a, a male strip show, but I was like buttoned up at the male strip show. I saw these men. I saw pictures of them. There's nothing innocent about what went happened that night. I was, and you moving. said you were said you said afterwards that now you understand the dancing plagues of medieval Europe. 
I really do. You would have done anything. <laughs> But the, the funny thing is, is I said that in the aftermath, but actually, like, I was giving such a strong, like, don't, I'm not a part of this vibe that, like, one of the strippers after really going, you know, doing gyrating and gesturing towards my friend came and just gave me a high five. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have a smell? They looked like they had a smell. No. No? mm that I was getting from the picture baby oil, cigarettes, and fart. Ew. Uh, no, no smell is coming to mind. But yeah, it was a very <laughs> seedy place. So in that, I went someplace like that. Yeah, that was not... I, I don't know. That didn't. That doesn't strike me as undignified so much as a jolly girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, if we, if we compare it to a colonial... Oh, Puritan woman. to a colonial woman, I'm doing things all the time that are undignified. Yeah. <laughs> Left, right, and center. Um, But yeah, I feel like what they, what one thing that always really surprises me is how much people are willing to drink on work trips and at work functions. I know, shocking. It's like, we're at a conference. Like, why do you even want to be drunk here? Why do you want to be? I wouldn't, even with my like close coworkers who I consider my friends, I don't like to get I would never drink with them heavily besides maybe one glass of wine or something until after we stopped working together. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a tough thing because people are in these work situations and they feel uncomfortable. So they want to become comfortable. Totally. And then they get too comfortable. It's like, but the, like, I think we just need to accept how uncomfortable it is to be in a job. Oh no. Sometimes it, it loosens things up in a pleasant way. One glass of wine, fine. I will have one glass of wine. Three glasses of wine, no. No, it's. I think the number is two. Depends on your size. I'm. I'm a one. <laughs> Maybe you can be a two. Yeah, I think. I think it's two for me to get to that sweet spot. But you know what I mean. It's like you don't want people in your profession to have memories of you swinging from a chandelier like Sia to Sia. I know. You know, it's fascinating to think of how Jeffrey Tubin moves through the world these days. Yeah. For anyone who forgets or somehow missed that story, can you summarize Jeffrey Tubin for the, for the world? Jeffrey Tubin was a journalist with CNN and The New Yorker. He was a it was four years ago in 2020, COVID, Zoom. He was at a very long whole staff meeting um, gaming out the election night and how they were going to cover it at CNN, I believe. And he got bored and decided to pleasure himself and he didn't realize his camera was on. So all of his coworkers saw he was fired. He was fired not only from the job where that happened, but also from the New Yorker. Um, and, you know, there were varying responses to it, some more merciful than others. But I, I don't think let it's not my intention to legislate that right now, but he does have to go through life with every that's the thing about dignity and it, i again the office some of these images are going to be hard to forget aaron said to andy images are hard to forget like how you can't forget that uh that amy coney barrett no not amy coney barrett amy klobuchar amy klobuchar can you tell us that story well there <laughs> when Amy Klobuchar was uh, in the primary, you know, it came out that from her staff that she was very abusive to her staff. And there were a variety of stories that illustrated this fact. Now, I kind of care that she was abusive to her staff. But what really captured me more was that she was one anecdote was that she was on a quick flight. Her aide gave her a salad, but didn't bring a fork. And so instead, she took a comb from her purse and used the comb to eat the salad in lieu of fork 
we had comb, a comb that goes through your hair, your hair, which has disgusting skin, oils, product, God knows what else. You might as well lick <laughs> your own scalp. I dare anyone who apologizes for her using the comb to lick your own scalp. What, you wouldn't put, like, you wouldn't chew on your own hair absentmindedly? As a child. <laughs> You, but you would be like, if you accident, if you absentmindedly, if you were like running and you got hair in your mouth as you were running strands, you're grossed out or you're like, whatever. I'm like, whatever, but that's not my scalp. Okay. I don't want a piece. I wouldn't pick a piece of my scalp off my head, put it in my mouth and eat it. <laughs> that is so gross. Exactly. I'm sorry for our listeners that you just said that. Are you serious right now? I, that's an image that's going to be hard for them to forget. Well, I'll cut it out then. I'm no, not... leave it in. Leave it in. Guess what? You don't know how to edit <laughs> the podcast. Only I do. So I get to make myself look more dignified. <laughs> yeah, it was undignified. It was like when I said fart. Yeah. And I mean, undignified. This is the, the, that is, I, I can't get that out of my head. I, I can't let a woman like that be president. Now, this is the thing about Jeffrey Tubin is, <laughs> I don't know, it's undignified to say this, but many men do this in private, okay? And there happened to be a camera there. He deserved to be fired. But many people don't use combs, I hope, to eat salads. Oh, you think the comb is worse yes, in a way? Yes, because, listen, we're all do undignified things in private like would i want someone to like wash watch me you know shaving my legs no that to me is undignified yeah from what i've heard from you <laughs> you observe dignity rights even when you're alone uh, the panopticon is alive and well with me yes well i asked you that question the other day and i don't think you answered what do you think People like if someone had been like kidnapped and kept in a room for 20 years. Oh, yeah. Do I you think it would be question. hard to suppress farts on the outside? I mean, my real answer is I think that that would be the least of their worries. <laughs> the least, but it's there. It's on the list. I have no idea. I, I really don't. I don't know. Do you think you would maintain you would be? maintaining discretion for the whole 20 years as if someone was there <laughs> i am very yes I, i'm very buttoned up behind closed doors but i know you have never been as outraged about the comb salad as i have, have i like amy klobuchar have you <laughs> ever used a comb as a fork no. is this what you're telling me no i'm not but i th i think i could I literally, how often do you wash your combs? I don't have a comb. Maybe that's it. I don't get combs. Okay. Maybe I just don't get, I don't have like, you know, I'm growing my hair out though. Up. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> growing it up. Oh, okay. Would you use a razor to eat a salad? No. No. <laughs> Um, I would not. Anyway. But if I had like a little piece of corn stuck between my teeth and it was infuriating me, I can't think of anything I wouldn't use in the pursuit of getting it out. Okay. Well, if you were on a half an hour flight and you had a salad and you had two hands that you could wash and pick at the salad with or a razor to eat the salad with, what would you choose? I think there must have been a fork on that plane. We might be talking about this too long. Anyway, dignity is, you know, there are things that we all do behind closed doors that we wouldn't want a camera there. And that's my point. That dignity has a lot to do with our relationship with how other people see us. Now, there's this one sect of Jews in Israel, a very fringe extremist sect, where the woman basically wears a tent 
you you can't even see the shape of the body. Sure. No, that's not really dignity. It's more like modesty, which would be know. another topic for us to cover. But it is interesting that for her, everything is behind closed doors because <laughs> she lives in a door. <laughs> like, and I do think there's something um, interesting about that. It's like nothing for from their perspective. There's no, there's nothing she could do in full sight that wouldn't harm her dignity. It's almost like with God, like you, you don't make an image of God. It's like people shouldn't have it. Like having an image inherently degrades us. Mm. And you know what? I kind of see the point. I kind of get it too. (laughs) You have to be a lot more careful. It would be better if I was just a disembodied spirit. So much more. Uh, you know what I love? Because I'm I'm doing these Zoom interviews lately. Actually, I don't really do this in Zoom interviews, but I do this on Zoom in Zoom calls. Oh, need to adjust something in your appearance. Wanna change the the buttoning of your shirt? Turn off the camera for a second. How cool would it be if you could just become invisible for a second? <laughs> Is my fly zipped? Let me become invisible for a second and then I'll check. Right, 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 right. It's really hard to do something like, yeah, like there are certain inadvertent things like not having your fly, your zipper zipped. That's very undignified. You can just stumble into the lack of dignity. Yeah. And these poor politicians like Trump, who we all remember him with the toilet paper. Wasn't that if you're uh, a politician, Giuliani? Or was, was it? it both? Giuliani for sure. Remember uh, Mike Pence and the fly on his head? Yeah, that was so strange. <laughs> but, or uh, what's his name? Um, the Florida guy. Ron DeSantis? No, he's looks like the penguin. I don't know. Anyways. There was this like footage of him trying to kiss his little daughter, and she was oh, like, no. "Ted Cruz." Ted That's Cruz, Texas, though. Oh, he's Texas. Um, but yeah, Ron DeSantis and his little heels to make him look taller. Yeah, like it's like you basically have people if- gunning for your dignity all the time. If you're a politician. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard. I know, and it's like Obama wore a light colored suit, and we've. We lost it. (laughs) Biden, people are gunning for Biden's dignity. And these people endure it. I don't know how they endure it. Yeah, there's something wrong with them. They don't have the same, like, psychological makeup that we have, in my opinion. To run for office is like a whole other type of human being. That's weird, isn't it? It really is. It really is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's like... So many ways we can, oh, oh, what we have to endure. It's kind of a crazy episode, right? Really? Do you think so? I feel like we've been wild, out of pocket. What does out of pocket mean? Like, I know what it means, but like, what's the image? I thought out of pocket meant out of office. You thought they just like changed the office to pocket and it meant like, I'm like, out of I'm pocket today. You know, I'm out of pocket. No, I don't think so. I think then it would be out of office. Right, 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 right. Out of pocket means out of money, according to... No, it says it can simply mean that you'll be away from work and unavailable. But do you know the expression like he's saying really out of pocket things? Yeah, that's Gen Z, according to to the Wall Street Journal. It says for, for those who are millennial or older, saying you're out of pocket can simply mean that you'll be away from work and unavailable. But for members of the Gen Z, of Gen Z being out of pocket can suggest acting chaotically or inappropriately. Yeah. And I want to know, like, why? What's the etymology of that? I don't know. Behaving in an undignified manner, one might say. Yes. Rolling well, one's eyes. Well, I, I think that we can conclude for me that it's important to preserve your dignity. I think it helps your self esteem. I think it, Again, like Oprah says, it you show people how to treat you. Yes, you teach other people how to treat you. How to treat you, and I think that is important. But 
at the same time, you have to be able to bounce back from those undignified moments of having spinach in your teeth or, you know, putting your foot in your mouth, which is something I do a lot in conversations. If I could get that together, I would be much more dignified. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think, you know, yes, you have to be you have to strive for that dignity. But not lose the common touch. You know, Marianne Williamson. No, Marilyn Robinson just wrote a new book that came out today about Genesis, the book of Genesis. A great religious thinker she is, a Christian and a humanist. And I would say, go read that book. Learn about how we were all created in the image of the divine and how we should act like it and not get tattoos that suggest otherwise. Your body is a wonderland. You are a little out of pocket today. <laughs> Alrighty. Have a good rest of your night. Bye-bye.